which are the main subjects of his books. Manade Kindembo presented the reader with his manifesto. Or a shared reality that exemplifies his ultimate mission, which is based on finding within, within himself the motivation or the correct vision to improve the world around him. He showed us the geography of his passions and how he's ready to step in to lead people to the promised land of liberty. The author delved into his own hidden agendas to find a more realistic worldview based on direct experience rather than imaginary subjects. He placed more emphasis on the land reform, the history of the Dira Congo, the social and cultural influence, economic and political struggles of Africa. The book is filled with drastic yet beautiful transformations that would change the course of the lives of many, change for the better, thereby enabling citizens to live according to their fullest desires and potentials. The author has demonstrated an ideal view that will progress over time to developing his own unique understanding of his process rather than relying on socially accepted belief systems. Inside the book, this project began on the 26th of January 2022. Portrait of Mwanandeke Kindembo, full name phonetic, Mwanandeke Kindembo. I want to take this precious time to dedicate this book to my continent, Mama Africa, and especially to my compatriots in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and any believer in the destiny of liberty. I am truly one of you. I come to you in the name of peace and love, O oh, Africa. My love for you will never cease or end until I see that day that you get your full freedom with your children. I ask this in the name of democracy and all the attributes that are associated with the redemption and freedom of nations. Destiny of Liberty in Big Print, Table of Contents, Introduction, Preface, My Visions, My Confession, Son of Nation, Refugee, Stranger to Danger, Walk with Me to Freedom, Free Nation, Voices of Citizens, Communities, Independence, Social and Cultural Influences, Employment, Corruption, The Seat of Power, Cure of Poverty, Housing, Decent Roads, Salary, Protestations, Bleeding Nation, Humanitarianism, In the Name of Action, Peace and Love, Rest in Freedom, The Beauty of Liberty, Honest promise, cries of innocence, love of my country, the beauty of Congo, democracy, visions of freedom, the prophecy, last hope, summary, book description, and copyright page on 180. Introduction. This is a manifesto to demonstrate my beliefs and the values that are close to my heart and, my mom and in my mind. It is a shared reality that I bring to your attention. I strongly believe that you have read or come across many manifestos in, in your lifetime, but have you looked at the characters of the people who wrote the most intriguing manifestos and why they did it in the first place, whether it is a yes or no answer, you always have the opportunity to work with me to find out my own reason for coming up with that, such an idea too. Let the journey begin. I am a Congolese engineer and the author of self-help books. My appetite for writing emerged after graduation when I completed a Bachelor of Engineering Honours in Computer Engineering at TU Dublin. Subsequently, I engage in philosophical, psychological, theological and mystical works, which are the main subjects of my books. I decided to take a different approach to life which is to improve the lives of many instead of just machinery. My mind and heart are on the political side of the coin, despite not having studied it in college or having any formal education in it. It was only through my self-study of political books and the ability to do research that I acquired during my four years of a technological university Dublin or TU Dublin. I firmly believe in education and the bright future that is always promised to the youth or the young and old generation. As you can see right now, it is not always a breath to easily move from one domain to another without losing something great in return. Sacrifices must always be ready whenever you wish to take a different path in life. I was ready to lose everything to be able to improve, to improve the lives of my fellow human beings. I knew the self help books category was still open for more great ideas. Education is endless in its form, just like learning has no limits either. For those who believe in astrological science, I was born on November 11th, which makes me a scorpion, according to the signs of the zodiac. And those who don't believe in it or haven't heard of, it, of astrology are still wondering why I even mentioned it here. This is because Scorpio people are mostly associated with this strong determination and are always open to change. It means that we are masters of transformation and conquerors of death and rebirth. The key word here is transformation, which made me to be who I am and communicate these words to you. True leadership can only be given to those who can adapt and conquer time, that is transformation in a nutshell. Because without transformation, there can be nothing new and the citizens cannot expect any change from the newly elected leader. Therefore, it can be seen that I live authentically and stay true to myself. As a native Congolese, don't be surprised if I keep this book entirely private in my country and don't despair because the same concept can be applied anywhere in the world. The universe should be our limit because we are all citizens of the same galaxy and the same universe. Do not be shocked either when I denounce capitalism and its effects on the society and the mixture of religions within the political powers of the state. The latter is not a new philosophy as the results can be seen today in the United States and in many parts of the world where religion is restrained from interfering with the political affairs of those countries. My ambition is therefore to become the voice and messenger of this change that everyone is constantly talking about. I firmly believe that real change can only be achieved through deeds and not mere promises, which will not benefit anyone. In politics, those who claim that all these gold are the ones who despise change, because there is no time without change and there is no life without time. Not believing in time is also not believing in change. Preface 
I know well the three main subjects that always stir people's minds, that is, politics, religion, and sports. These three attributes are known as the land of fanaticism. This book is based on the first attribute, which is general politics. Liberty has always been the cry of every, of every nation through the ages. This is a fact that cannot be denied by people who seek their daily freedom in life, who doesn't want themselves, including their future gen generation, to live in full freedom. Even tyrants will always raise their hands because this is what every human being strives for on a daily basis. Desires may be different from individual to individual, but the end and the destinations are always the same for the majority of people seeking fame. On the other hand, let no one confuse the words destination and destiny. The first is when a person reaches the finish line, while the latter is when a desire must be fulfilled until you achieve your ends. It means it, it is a mean to an end, whether you reach it through luck, hard work, or your own ability. The greatest personalities have always been those who can identify opportunities and apply their great abilities for the common good of the whole nation. That is, serving the people who have supported you all along and attracting those who doubted your abilities in the past. In the case of governing a republican state, there is no definite ruler or final ruler of the state, simply because all citizens are free to express and demonstrate their capacities in broad daylight. This means that the president or the prime minister cannot claim to be the final ruler of that nation because the real power lies with the people themselves, those walking the philosophical path of humanitarianism instead of individualism, by putting people before profit and never exploiting them or unnecessarily taxing those who walk. Therefore, any political party that does not respect or consider the importance of nature in general cannot be tolerated within society, and you cannot pretend to be treating nature in the best way when you force your own citizens to live in fear and depression because of poverty. There is no doubt that corruption is the first ingredient of poverty and suffering in any environment. People want peace, and above all, they want pure freedom that allows them to do their business serenely. Divide and conquer should not be an option, as well as we all know that unity has always brought harmony throughout history, as this is also my only solution. Simply put, love should be your truest religion and humanity your priority in life. It is the only philosophical ideology that can help us reach the promising land of unity and make every citizen live up to the expectation. It is the method of combining different desires together and identifying common attributes that are shared by the majority in order to satisfy the needs of the greatest number. At the same time, it will give more time for a few to catch up or form their unique groups, which can also meet their daily needs. Because human behaviors cannot be predicted, we should also not expect all people to have the same mental thinking skills. This is why learning and teaching different concepts to others still matters, even as I speak today. As we all know that there is no freedom without the presence of equality, it would make no sense to leave out this greatest attribute. The ideology of my humanitarianism is placed above all simply because it demonstrates the care of nature and how we wish to treat our fellow human beings, including animals. The fact that nothing can be or go out of nature does not mean that the ideology of exploitation does not exist. We must always be prepared for those who are ready to exploit us in a way that does not respect the principles of our humanist. Liberals or those who fight for egalitarianism are also on the same path as those who put people before money. These are all philosophical ideologies that must be put in action rather than just having mere beliefs. And that is the main reason for writing this book, because I want to apply and turn these philosophical thoughts and action. I'll walk you through every step of my vision and show you how I aim to bring change that works for people. I'll address the topics that will matter most to citizens and in all communities. My Visions I was born and a half raised in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, for my name Zaire. Before reaching the age of 25 years old, I spent the other half of my life in the Republic of Ireland. That means I've experienced several cultural changes in my life and I believe that they've made me to be the person whom I am today. These changes have taught me the correct ways of living with different people and how to behave in an environment that I found myself in. Therefore, I'm always thankful to the Creator and my parents because of their visions of accepting us to travel through different places and experience life on a different scale. It is through traveling that I got the audacity to write from experience and the confidence to express my thoughts to the world, perhaps to the whole universe. I totally agree with the idea of the state having full control of the political, economical, and, act and social aspects of the community, meaning that the country is displaying full sovereignty and not talking from the philosophical point of view alone, because I know that freedom does not come at free cost. Like everything else in the world, including freedom, these things, there's always a price tag on every single object that you receive. The price of freedom, death, is well known to everyone throughout all the generations. This is why the political life has never been a challenge violence and men or blood of the innocents. Thus, a heart warm leader is always needed to bring peace where war has not benefited anyone and when it is causing more harm than good. In my whole life, when I started to apply logic to, so to solve several scenarios, I have dedicated myself to the service of the many. I sacrificed my time for the greater good. At this moment, I feel quite ready to serve the world and humanity in general. I am ready to bring my country, the Congo, back from its knees and make it stand up on equal terms with any developed country in the world. I am ready to improve the life of the day. 
It is not, however, to keep dreaming while staying idle or to keep praying for fortune to guide our path in the darkness. My vision is to illuminate the minds and cast aside ignorance in any form that it may present itself. At the same time, that does not mean going against any religious belief, nor does it mean applying the, the philosophy of idealism. I am rather relying on the practical side of the theoretical practices. My belief is that the scientific approach is the best to follow, but it will be the greatest path only when it is conducted with the greatest minds within the state. That is because the beauty of science lies in the admitting new mistakes and then adapt according to the universe. Change is beautiful in science, whereas religions are immune to change and the old ideologies remain the same throughout the ages. The age, I believe that true change can come only by mastering time, meaning that we ought to be open-minded to study the previous histories of the great men as well as to learn, uh, to learn about our current times. Those mastering time by learning from the past and implementing the lessons in the present, while at the same time reshaping the future events according to our needs or desires. Moreover, I believe there are some benefits in regarding of having different religion, of faith or religious beliefs altogether. That is because it is almost impossible to make people stop believing in something they have been practicing since their childhood. I cannot take that freedom of faith from the population or limit their freedom of expression within the society. There are many facts that can prove and back up these statements. I'll only recite a few of them. You can be a scientist in mind while still being religious at heart. Only the selected few on the top of religion possess this scientific knowledge. That is why most of the religious people are daily scolded and verbally abused by others for not knowing anything good about themselves and the world around them. My aim is to banish this mental slavery within the, to the citizens and make them to turn their eyes on the scientific researches, those that will be capable to talk with concrete proof from experience and from experience gain through different experiments. Political changes do, does not just fall from heaven. It is, it is an interaction or relationship between people and people, learning from one another and pushing each other forward to the road of success, meaning that the religious and scientific man ought to come together and try to enlighten one another on a daily basis, those fighting ignorance and the fanaticism within the state. The main goal is to bring utopian sentiments rather than focusing on the dystopia of the society. My confession. I noticed that you cannot wait to hear my confession. It is the most beautiful and triggering word used in different religious practices. However, there is a different confession when it comes on the political level. It is not a secret that my continent, Mama Africa, has been divided for many decades, and the most shocking thing is that no one is fighting or willing to unite her. Every country in Africa is crying for its own good independence. Not only that, but those who are blessed with the natural resources wish to keep all the wealth to themselves only. That is the main reason of division in Africa, as we are talking today. In the 24th century, most of the leaders are still haunted by the nightmare. Mayors of slavery, mostly mental colonization in general. Therefore, my confession lies in the unification of Africa, bringing the 54 countries fully recognized by the UN, and including the Western Sahara and Somaliland, and cooperation with each other. The most misunderstood part is when the African leaders start imagining they will be deprived of their power. This is because they have twisted the sweetness of power and gained wealth through the wrong means. They are not interested in the lives of the citizens, but in their own health and their family welfare in general. The continent is filled with the smell of selfishness, which is capitalism at its highest form. Because only the few have good living standards as normal beings are supposed to be living, while the rest of the population are daily struggling to bring bread on the table. The Africans have suffered so much from the political oppression, economic exploitation, and social degradation. In short, Africa has been brought back to its knees and this generation cannot take it any longer. Immediate change is needed in many sectors to improve the standards of living. And how do I wish to do that without having any political power, you may ask? That is all correct and that is my main reason of writing this manifesto in the first place. It is part of my confession to be given that chance to bring change and unity within my country as well in, in my continent. All of that is based on the trust that citizens have placed in me as one of their kind, ruling through the aid of the heart, feelings or emotions, rather than through the mind that always seeks for division when it is in the overthinking mode. By using the word heart, I am emphasizing the use of intuition instead of intellect alone. At the same time, it is not a bad idea to connect the heart and mind altogether those fighting every feeling with reason and vice versa. Son of Nation As I have stated in previous paragraph, I was born in Baraka, Democratic Republic of Congo. Therefore, I am a Congolese. Not only by birth, but both of my parents are Congolese. Those making me 100% Congolese too. My identity is that I am an African, even though I consider myself to be the citizen of the universe. My philosophical idea is that I am a material materialist. That means I believe the Creator gave nature all known and unknown powers. Mother Nature, always benevolent and sometimes ruthless, nourishes also on a daily basis. My political views are that I am a realist and humanist. My views are based on treating people equally and putting them before profit, or the famous saying of putting the family before work. However, the family demands wealth to continue. The work requires famine support. Wealth needs someone, the family, to consume it. Otherwise, it would be boring to try to enjoy it in solitude, meaning that some put work first while others put their family first. The two have different opinions, but all are correct, depending on the, co the current situation. My economical point of view is based on the industrialization of the nation. This means that I'm interested in the increase of development within the society, those helping and meeting the demands of the citizens. 
refugee. I came to the Republic of Ireland as a refugee and I started my secondary or high school education here. After the completion of secondary education, I went to the university to do my further study. In the course of my choice, those were the happiest years of my life because I made many friends and most importantly, I achieved what I went after, Bachelor of Engineering Honours. I knew that I had to focus on my studies instead of enjoying too much to the point of madness. I knew that some pleasures had to be suppressed in order to make the end justify the means, because it is the end or the finishing line that matters most to the majority. That is how capitalism has programmed us to think and imagine in our daily basis. Many only seek for the end results while trying to ignore all the hard works or the long processes of getting there. This can lead to cheating and does produce corruption in any environment. I had to note it down because it is not a light matter that can be left unsaid, as I have been asked to enlighten this generation, including myself, to depart from the wrongdoings that we have been doing blindly and follow the right path to liberty. Since I have defined myself and found my worth in life, I came to shape and reshape my own philosophical views to fit with the reality of the world around me. I, I came to realize that I am not afraid of failure, because without it, then I will end up losing the adventurous part of my life. The ups and downs must always be, be present in one's life. We must accept it when someone else wins and try to encourage them to hold their office in peace instead of criticizing without any proof. Criticism is great when it is based on concrete arguments, but useless when it is done out of jealousy. It will always backfire those who started it. Therefore, we must quench the thirst of power and consider the emotional level or mental health of those whom we are currently dealing with. That is the true definition of humanity when it is put at practice. As I am writing this message, I am no longer a refugee and have obtained full citizenship of the state that took me in as one of them. The f that fact made me to start believing in the existence of my destiny and restored the sense of humanity within me. And I believe that destiny smiling at the people are going to become successful but are still struggling in the present moment. I repeat once again, don't confuse destiny with the idea of predestination, because everything is predestined in life except the destiny of a man. The words may sound the same, but they do not have the same meaning in the context which I am delivering here. It is up to the individual to imagine that everything has been predestined into his, li into his life, or to realize that he is capable to shape and reshape his own destiny, meaning that we are given the free will or the freedom of choice to act according to our desires and to determine whether we we'll believe or disbelieve in the Creator. If there is no free will, then sin doesn't exist either. If sin doesn't exist, then the foundations of the final day would end up collapsing down and turning heaven into an imaginary matter. Therefore, it can be concluded that to believe in predestination it is to deprive us of our free will. No freedom, but we are, left, we are all slaves to our actions. Stranger to Danger By nature, I am an adventurous individual. That means I am open to traveling and trying out new things that are beneficial to me and the society in general. At the same time, I cannot allow my feelings to go unnoticed without being followed with reason, because I believe that our feelings can still deceive us sometimes. That should always be followed with reason, just to make sure everything is according to plan. This means I tend to be in between the adventurous and cautious man, but I still consider myself an adventurous, as I am more open to change rather than the latter attribute. I believe that adventurous individual does what a cautious person constantly desires in life. I am the kind of a person who acts immediately after considering all the alternatives. I am not, however, slow to act as those who are too cautious in life. Those who always let the opportunities pass by, while being fearful to take it or doubtful of their abilities. Those who are considered adventurous by nature are, are optimists too. That is why my mindset is always focusing at the brightest star and seeing all the goodness in others. Whenever I criticize someone, it is only by to illuminate the minds of those individuals who are following things blindly without questioning them. That is because my philosophical reasoning doesn't allow me to humiliate but to illuminate only. And it is unwise to force others to accept ideas when you do not understand them yourselves. Listening and hearing is one thing. But understanding is the most crucial part of the equation of mankind. Along with inspiration, they are the only things that distinguish us from animals, and the reason why man has been known as good thinking animal. We can be free only through the application of reason, valuing our togetherness and cultivating our minds to find inspiration in everything that we undertake. Walk with me to freedom. It is well known that there is no freedom without sacrifice or paying the price for it. Therefore, it will always remain true that freedom is a matter of sacrifice. Once you overcome these challenges, you will surely enjoy peace of mind for a lifetime. That is why it is considered to be much sweeter than peace. Because there cannot be peace without freedom, and if you claim otherwise, then I can assure you that your peace will be short-lived. True freedom comes from within, and it cannot be expected to be offered by another individual. We are advised either to take it by force or die trying. That there is no other option that an individual can surely get the fullest freedom than the above mentioned procedures. Compared to the dog, the wolf is a true symbol of freedom or of those who refuse to be spoon fed. In my, in my noble opinion, I believe that freedom means to be able to do as you wish without interfering with the desires of another living being, humans, animals, and plants. It means to defend oneself without crossing the line of self defense because too much of anything is always considered not good. Otherwise, we may end up on the side of the oppressors instead of oppressed. My main task is to bring unity between the conflicting ideologies and make sure that the citizens have their full rights. It is a vision that respects nature and everything within it. 
When it comes on the state matter, it can be seen that the freedom population expands and the, no the nation flourishes with great wealth. But the opposite is also true. Being under tyrant, the nation will cease to expand, development and life will get tougher, and worse, uh, time passes by. This, th this tyrant comes in many forms, whether within or without. The final outcomes are always the same. That is why freedom is such a great ingredient in any country that wishes to, to have free citizens and do their businesses in peace. True freedom emerges from a republican state and not in a monarchy. The former years. That, therefore, it is such a great entity that cannot be allowed to vanish as long as people are fighting for the right cause of achieving their freedom. Since the society is the container upon which culture rests, they are both considered essential in any living environment. Thus, the nation depends upon culture and vice versa, meaning that there cannot be the nation without culture and culture without the presence of a nation in the first place. And when your culture is destroyed, then the nation or the society is truly going to ruin. The people won't be able to tolerate it, except those who are well prepared for it or those who are always adaptive to change at any given time and circumstances. Every culture is truly different from one another. The African culture cannot be the same as the European or the European to be similar to the American culture. Different environments and people or societies will end up producing different outcomes, different cultures. It is therefore our responsibility to enjoy and respect our cultures, including the cultures of others. The truest conquest must be carried in the mind and not in causing more pain to another living being. Above all, we must respect nature in order to reap more of our pleasures that she always bestows upon us on a daily basis. Here, the citizen ought to be responsible for their actions and act maturely by following the correct laws within the environment. Maturity should become our daily practices and never to allow any mature thought to, pen to penetrate through the mind without our knowledge of its presence. It can be said that politics is dependent upon economics and economics upon culture. This thing applies to any domain out there. On the other hand, we are quick to judge and generalize all peoples by claiming that, quote, I hate politics, or, quote, I hate all the politicians. These are the words of those who do not apply logic in daily lives. If one apple is rotten, that doesn't mean that you will sit back and watch the rest to rot too. The blame here will fall upon the individual who stood idle and decided to do nothing about the presented challenge. But if you want true change, then it would be wise to start it with yourself or do something about the current issue. In the, I'm on the same path of bringing that change within a society I'm placed in. I'm adapted. I am adaptive to an environment and ready to put my expertise to improve the lives of many rather than keeping all the knowledge to myself. Because I believe that knowledge is similar to wealth. Both are useless when not in use. Knowledge must be extended to ignorant ears and wealth multiplied in order to keep its value. Politics is simply the interaction between two or more people. However, it is crucial for every politician to understand the interaction between people and nature. That is to say, economics is the backbone of politics. The voice of the people must be heard, but we must keep an open eye on the improvement of our economics too. That is what will make it possible to put the bread on the table daily. The relationship between family and wealth has been mentioned in the previous chapters. We ought to learn how to distinguish them when dealing with people in different circumstances. Communities I strongly believe that our communities can be easily improved by educating the population that is residing there. No doubt that education has always been the key to every nation's greatness. It is the key to civiliz civilization and the key to open-mindedness. I have mentioned it in one of my books that a society where emotions come last and selfishness is considered blessed or placed first before anything cannot be expected to produce good fruits. Therefore, the good, deed, the good seeds must be planted in the minds of the citizens in order to ameliorate their lives and to allow them to live in peace of mind with full guaranteed freedom at their doorsteps. It is our philosophical thinking that gives shape to our ideologies, which in turn reshape our philosophical approaches towards life. Philosophy is a seed or thought that allows us to think and examine several scenarios of, of our environment. It is the search of wisdom in order to comprehend the world and the universe in which we are the citizens of. Therefore, philosophy cannot be avoided if any nation is striving to become a developed country. That there cannot be manifestation of anything if the minds of people are still living in ignorance. Mental transmi transmutation along with the scientific explanation must be taught in schools to, illumin to illuminate the minds of everyone the young and old alike. By shaping and reshaping the minds of the people in the correct manner, that will be the only path to utopianism, simply because true change must begin inside the brain or mind before taking any form on the physical level. That is because the mental plane is above the physical, just as the mental is useless before the spiritual. In simple terms, the intuition is more developed than is more advanced than the intellect. It is said that the intellect always divides while the intuition unites all. And it is a great philosophical thought that ought to be embraced by people accepting the existence of the spiritual realm in order to avoid this entopia in any generation and prepare for the great times of a golden age. Independence what is the real definition of the word independence? I mean, what do you believe? True independence is freedom in a nutshell. I call it, quote, true, true, or real, simply because some people are still living in disillusion, disillusion and dependence. 
they are still chained down both mentally, financially, and spiritually. In this case, there is no benefit to be only physically independent when the mind is still not liberated from mental slavery. I am talking about my continent, Africa. She has been tortured both physically, mentally, economically, and spiritually. She was the victim of the four seas of imperialism. That is colonization, civilization, Christianity, and commerce. All began in the name of civilization, Christianity, commerce, and then colonization. The main question would be, who is the most civilized individual on earth? Who can raise up their hand to claim to be more civilized when violence and corruption are still exalted in every society? Are we not all chained down by all mood swings sometimes? But Africa is still bleeding from the wounds that were left by oppressors. They are not satisfied yet. They are still wounding her daily to their own amusement. The imperialists are still taking pleasure to see her bleed to death and their children dying of hunger and poverty. The oppressors take all the wealth and fill their pockets while feeding on three meals a day along with their families. Even those who claim to be our friends are still coming to exploit her instead of developing and raising up our pillars. My African brothers and sisters are still mentally blind, both in the eyes and in the minds. Who is our truest friend and who are our worst enemies? That cannot be that we that we cannot tell for sure, even though we know our enemies, but we still welcome them with open hands. We are always ready to see and witness our children slaughtered like cattle without saying a word. We have no one to blame except us all ignorance of world matters. In Africa, we have everything that we need, but we don't know the difference between needs and wants, nor are we aware of how to keep our position secured. We have been called and labeled all the worst names that you can, think of, you can ever think of, and we have got nothing to do about it because we are powerless and we take pleasure in being so. The independence of some African countries is nothing but a laughing stock. Most of them are beautifully crafted on the paper, but in reality, the people are still living in slavery. They are chained down by their leader in power, and the leader is also a puppet of someone else from the outside. In other words, the, outsider, the outsiders are still the true rulers of those countries who didn't gain their full independence. If you want freedom, then go for the full bundle. You cannot expect anything less than what you expected or defined as a full independence within your society. Many nations are free by name, but they are still living under, under tyranny. That is the same as those who didn't gain their fullest independence, because the outcomes are all shown to be the same, from those who have sold their freedom to the outsiders and those who have accepted supreme leaders to take over the control of the state affairs. Remember, independence is freedom, and without independence, then you cannot claim to be free at all, no matter if you are living in a three-story house and having three meals a day. We must value our independence in the same manner as that we value our lives, because our lives and the lives of our offspring depends upon it, and we have to cultivate it in order to live to our fullest potentials. I seek for the fullest freedom of my continent, Africa, and I ask the help of my bro African brothers and sisters in fulfilling this vision. Let's get out of our dreaming state and turn all of our dreams and visions. The final step is to act, following up, and the footsteps of the fam famous maxim, quote, actions speak louder than words. Social and cultural influences. At this stage, we are all familiar with the meaning of the word culture after the concrete definition that we are given in the previous chapters. Don't let the word social throw you off. It is just a study of the society we are currently living in and their organizations. How do you wish to organize the people and how will the people react to those changes? What are the behaviors of the citizens within the society or nation? That is why I said that culture is dependent upon the society because all cultures are the byproducts of the people. Same as poverty can be said to be the byproduct of colonization or lack of mental development. All the cultures rest upon the society and that is why we must respect and value them everywhere we go. They are our identities whenever we go out of our environments. We may decide to change according to the environment that we are currently living in, but we cannot forget the pleasures or nightmares of the previous culture that we left behind. Therefore, there is no doubt that social and cultural influences are happening daily and this is such a great thing if we truly believe that change is inevitable in any given environment. But it would be unwise to talk about the social and cultural influences without implementing the benefits of history. It is a well-known fact that history is simply the study of the past events happening within the society. It doesn't stop there. History can still be seen in every culture, economics, politics, ideologies, and all, philosoph and all philosophies. Meaning that it is not a lightweight subject that can be put off, because without knowing history or the history of your nation, then we surely get nowhere in life. We'll be as ignorant as we appear to be in front of everyone we encounter. Many authors have emphasized the importance of history, and I do not wish to write an essay on it again. Go and find yourself, mostly your self-worth, through the history of your nation. Read everything that you can get to your hands on and never avoid anything because it is outdated. All the knowledge are beneficial at the right time. I believe that it won't be fair to it won't be fair place to talk about the social aspect of people without touching on the land. This world can is can be easily confused with the nation. But it is the other way around, because the land came first before anything. The land gave us our history, and sometimes history awakens the sleeping souls up on their feet to reclaim their land and rights backs. The land is a final container that holds everything within it. The word land here is attributed to nature itself, and nothing can go outside of it. All is in the land, and the land reflects in all. 
In simple terms, all philosophies give birth to ideologies, politics is born from different ideologies, economics shape of political views, culture rests on the society, in every land there's a society and every land has got its own history. Since history is just an abstract world, and the land is the concrete part, the credit will be given to the land, and then every land will have its own historical events that happened in the past, or still happen even today. From this point of view, history appears to be an endless journey and it is always fun from generation to generation. It is, however, the duty of every leader to familiarize themselves with history, both from your nation and worldwide, to keep oneself updated with the current situations of the universe. That is what I've been doing since I pursued my engineering course.
Don't let the world social throw you off. It is just a study of the society we are currently living in and their organ. Organizations. How do you wish to organize the people and how will the people react to those changes? What are the behaviors of the citizens within the society or nation? That is why I said that culture is dependent upon the society, because all cultures are the, by are the byproducts of the people. Same as poverty can be said to be the byproduct of colonization or lack of mental development. All the cultures rest upon the society and that is why we must respect and value them everywhere we go. They are all identities whenever we go out of our lives. We may decide to change according to the environment that we are currently living in, but we cannot forget the pleasures or nightmares of the previous culture that we left behind. Therefore, there is no doubt that social and cultural influences are happening daily and this is such a great thing if we truly believe that change is inevitable in any given environment. But it would be unwise to talk about the social and cultural influences without implementing the benefits of history. It is a well-known fact that history is simply the study of the past events happening within the society. It doesn't stop there. History can still be seen in every culture, economics, politics, ideologies, and all, philosoph and all philosophies. Meaning that it is not a lightweight subject that can be put off, because without knowing your history or the history of your nation, then we surely get nowhere in life. We will be as ignorant as we appear to be in front of everyone we encounter. Many authors have emphasized the importance of history, and I do not wish to write an essay on it again. Go and find yourself, mostly your self-worth, through the history of your nation. Read everything that you can get your hands on and never avoid anything because it is outdated. All the knowledge are beneficial at the right time. I believe that it won't be fair to it won't be fair place to talk about the social aspect of people without touching on the land. This world can, is, can be easily confused with the nation. But it is the other way around because the land came first before anything. The land gave us our history and sometimes history awakens the sleeping souls up on their feet to reclaim their land and rights back. The land is a final container that holds everything within it. The word land here is attributed to nature itself and nothing can go outside of it. All is in the land and the land reflects in all. In simple terms, all philosophies give birth to ideologies, politics is born from different ideologies, economics shape of political views, culture rests on the society, in every land there is a society and every land has got its own history. Since history is just an abstract